And so the age of top-notch strikers in the Premier League has well and truly arrived. Well, Man City announced Haaland on Monday morning, or unveiled him, I should say. Benfica announced the sale of their own top-notch merchant, Darwin Nunez, to Liverpool. It is official, at least from Benfica's side of things. Darwin Nunez will be heading to Liverpool as yet another big money transfer out of the club. Thanks to the orange man, Georges Mendes. What a guy, such a popular figure here on the channel, isn't he? Certainly that video I did on him would have made him happy, no? Of course he didn't see it. And anyway, we aren't here to talk about Georges Mendes. We are here to speak about the one and only Darwin, Nunez. That is, this isn't a breakdown on the origin of species or anything like that. You can find that on my other channel. But yeah, as a Benfica supporter, it's been interesting to watch the internet, namely Twitter and a bit of YouTube comments, just drop bogus opinions on Darwin after reading a few Twitter threads or, comp or watching a few compilation videos, two of the worst ways to get a read on a player. So as a Benfica supporter, having seen two full seasons of Darwin, I can give you a good look into the kind of player he is. Of course, I did a video on Darwin toward the end of March, but that went heavily into his backstory, his humble beginnings in Uruguay, the hardships his family went through, the sacrifices his brother made so Darwin could play professionally, etc, etc, etc. I recommend checking that out if you want to get to know Darwin the human a bit, but in this video we'll go over all of his strengths, weaknesses, and whether I think he's a plot player. Spoiler alert, I think he is. Before that, a quick shout out to our sponsors for today's video, the homies at One Football, where plenty of Darwin updates were happening minute by minute thanks to their app, you want in? Just download it on iOS or Android, then follow the players, teams, national teams, or competitions that you are interested in, and your homepage will be curated to fit your interests and keep you up to date with notifications of any breaking news. Plus, you can follow transfer stories via their transfer rumor raider, such as the Darwin transfer, or follow matches live with their match tickers when you're on the go. Missed a match? All good, as there is plenty of media to take in, such as highlights and interviews with players in OneFootball's video section, incredible articles to take in from your favorite publishers, and so much more. As mentioned, use the link in the description to download OneFootball, and you're on your way to a football big brain. Thanks, OneFootball. Appreciate you. Let's get to Darwin. Reaction to the fee, people ask me this all the time. I mean, prices for everyone are just ridiculous these days. And so naturally, when you have a Georges Mendes deal, it's going to be astronomic. The agent fees that he demands, plus the fact that Benfica wanted it to be as high as possible, duh, who doesn't? But Benfica had further motivation given a percentage will be heading to Almeria, his previous club. It was always going to be a silly fee. And further, it was always going to be a speculative fee. Not only is this sort of the direction that transfers of youngsters are trending toward, just look at Shuameni, but if Darwin reaches that high ceiling that clearly the very, very talented Liverpool recruitment staff believe he is capable of, then this fee, offset by perhaps a sale of Mane, will soon be forgotten. Speaking of potential, Let's get to brass tacks here. Like I said in the intro, it's been fascinating reading just how divisive Darwin is on Twitter, both from some Benfica supporters and plenty of people who developed an opinion on him based on some compilations of his worst touches and his best goals. <laughs> That's how football fandom works in this age. That's why opinions can be so divisive on certain players. It's not just goals and skills compilations anymore. Twitter accounts touting compilations of the player's worst touches and finishes exist as well, and the wedge gets driven deeper. So here's my opinion as a Benfica supporter that has watched Darwin for two seasons and regularly smacks his pop filter. First off, his first season was very, very strange. Many people like to speak about how bad of a passer he is, often citing his pass completion percentage, which is not very good. I absolutely stand by that. But in his first season, he broke the record for the amount of assists, five, in his first four matches in the Portuguese league, all the while failing to score in those first four matches. It was great that he contributed, but his contributions were confusing for the forward we broke our club record to sign. That first season was tough for him. He only scored five goals in the league from 28 appearances, but had 10 assists. In all, 13 goals and 12 assists in his first season with Benfica. Not horrendous, but again, not what we imagined from our club record signing, the guy we brought in to score goals. Thankfully, he scored a ton, 34 and 41 in his second season. One thing I like to point to as one of his biggest strengths is that he is very much a player that takes to direction and feedback well, and he is absolutely determined to be successful, something I speak about at 
length when looking at his backstory in the previous video about him that I mentioned. To me, in that first season, he came across as a nervous player who was afraid to fail with his finishing and therefore defaulted to passing to his teammates or getting caught in offside positions all the time because he just wasn't switched on. Overall, I think this is where he improved the most at Benfica in his second season. I believe Georges Jesus worked with him at great lengths to improve his decision making in the box, make him a little bit more selfish, and his positioning. How he can arrive at the back post consistently to finish past the keeper, that kind of thing. It's not so much that he needed work on his finishing, I mean that's debatable as well as he is quite unorthodox just in general, but he had a proven track record from Almeria that he could score. It was just when to shoot versus pass, where to position himself, his awareness when it came to being offside, and all of that. And he did improve on that greatly in his second season. No more nerves. He scored in very big matches against Sporting, against Barcelona, Bayern, Ajax, Liverpool. I mean, clearly he wasn't nervous anymore. He got it done at Anfield. No doubt, most of the danger that he provides is when he is running at defenders or running beyond them, whether he is playing as a central forward or whether he is indeed starting from a wider position. The top attribute that people will associate with him is his pace. Running in behind defenders, he is lethal as he can outrun most, and he is decent at running at defenders with the ball at his feet, but there is a major caveat here. With the ball at his feet, he needs space to run into in order to beat his man with a quick step over or by knocking it past them and running into space. If Darwin is in a tight spot in the corner with two defenders on him, his success rate of wriggling out isn't as high as other more technical dribblers. He won't be dribbling out of many cul-de-sacs, so to speak, though he will from time to time. Just don't expect it. Where he's best is running into space, which makes him a natural outball for any team that likes to transition quickly, aka a Liverpool side. He often drifts wide to the left, so there will definitely be some getting used to for him, as that will no doubt be where Luis Diaz likes to cook. In fact, Darwin and Diaz both have been employed as inverted wingers for their penchant to play wide on the left and then cut inside on their favored right foot and strike towards goal. Darwin has scored a few in doing just that for Benfica in this past season. As far as hold-up play and contributing to the build-up phase of the attack, Darwin's a bit limited. He isn't a classic number nine target man that you can hoof the ball up to and he'll hold it up and wait for reinforcements. I mean, he can do that from time to time, but nobody would identify that as a strength of his, and it needs a lot of work. Like I've said in the past, he isn't a Giroud-type striker, a master at the classic target man attributes, nor is he a Kane-esque striker in that he will drop deep and spray passes around to contribute to the build-up to an attack. He's very much a forward, whether he's deployed as a left winger or centrally, that is custom tailored to a team that likes to transition quickly with lightning fast counter attacks. He's often the out ball from defense as well. From crosses and set pieces, he has improved a ton over the last season. His aerial ability has improved a lot and his height complements his speed quite well. He's quick for a big guy as he is about 1.87 meters or six foot two. You may have seen his goal against Ajax where he rose high to head past Onana. He scored a few headers for Benfica in the league as well. So that's something that I've been happy to see him improve at. His positioning in the box also improved greatly. And given his acceleration and improvement aerially, he is able to get away from his markers and has the height and heading prowess to punish teams from set pieces and crosses. Given how he likes to float to the left, crosses from the right are particularly tempting for him. No doubt Liverpool's recruitment staff looked closely at this as they live in the Alexander-Arnold era. I would expect to see Alexander-Arnold and Darwin linking up quite a bit. The short answer to this question is yes. As I have spoken of at length on other YouTube channels or on my podcast, The Unsackable Podcast, Liverpool is the one team in the Premier League that works for Darwin given their play style and the manager that would be overseeing his development, Klopp. Will Liverpool's recruitment department have a penchant for successful signings, players that make sense for the manager, Klopp also has a penchant for developing attackers, taking their raw potential and molding them into the lethal forwards. Just look at what he did with all the players at Dortmund and now at Liverpool. To me, Darwin Nunez is the exact kind of signing that Klopp loves to get his hands on, and his reaction to Darwin Nunez after the two legs against Benfica, the way the press conference went, the way Klopp spoke about him, it just felt like Liverpool would put in a good effort to sign the kid, and of course they have done so. It definitely is not the finished article. 
and will integrate himself within the team immediately as Luis Diaz did. He won't be able to do that. Diaz is technically more sound than Darwin, that's absolutely for sure. Diaz is a much more technical dribbler and passer compared to Darwin, and it's not just an age thing as Diaz is three years older than Darwin, it's just a difference in players. Aesthetically, Diaz is much nicer to watch, as Darwin, as I mentioned, has a much more unorthodox look to his game and his dribbling, his shooting, his movement in general. Maybe that's to his advantage when it comes to sort of off-putting defenders, <laughs> I don't know. The things that Darwin will always have is his ridiculous pace to get away from defenders, his constantly improving positioning, and his finishing ability. Now, I do have to flag his finishing as he vastly overperformed when it came to his expected goals this season. And when a player does that without much precedent, that causes me to pause and think, okay, prove you can do it again, and then we'll be talking. That's why I wanted him to stay at Benfica in some ways and prove that this wasn't just a one-off season for him. That, and because he's a good player that Benfica can always use. <laughs> but in saying that, Liverpool's recruitment department know far more than I do as far as what to look for in the underlying analytics and numbers. And I truly believe that under Klopp, he will help round out all of the rough edges when it comes to Darwin's passing and hold-up play while exploiting his greatest strengths. If I had to guess, I'd say that Darwin will be a success, but again, don't expect him to slot in as Luis Diaz or Salah did in the past. Give him time, and I'd bet that he'll come good. That's it. I hope that was informative to all of you Liverpool supporters or just anyone in general who wants to know a little bit more about Darwin going into this Premier League season. Hey, if you enjoyed this, do me a favor and hit that like button or let me know if you disliked it by disliking it. If you're new, why not subscribe for more from us here at Rabona TV? When I say us, I mean me. It's just me. <laughs> but beyond that, I'm Adrian and have a great day. Ciao.